Good morning, everybody. We have made it to Saturday. We are 25 hours away from kickoff in Tennessee. Seahawks playing the Titans, and quite simply, this is going to be one of those games where all you can really say is that the team needs to get another notch in their belt and move on. Uh, this is not going to be the kind of game where you're going to get a lot of respect or credibility from the world if you pull it if if you pull it together and win. This is not going to be a game where there's going to be a ton of style points you're going to be able to earn. This is not a game that gets you back on the national radar as some kind of contender. Uh, this is just a game where there are two possible outcomes. You win, and it's like, oh, well, of course you won. You better win. Or you lose, and it's, holy moly, how did you allow that to happen? You're an embarrassment. Go away and never force us to watch one of your games again. So those are the two outcomes here, and look, we, we, uh, we've kind of drawn a little bit of a long straw here with these last three games, the way they're shaping up, so the fact that Seattle's put themselves in a position where winning out almost definitely gets them into the postseason, that's, uh, that's great and everything, but now we have to actually take care of business, and as much as I haven't been terribly happy with the Seahawks this season, I do think there are some real issues that in some ways go beyond the win-loss record. Every team we've lost to so far this season is either going to make the playoffs or they're a playoff contender and would have made the playoffs if not for injuries. Like Cincinnati, they're on the cusp of the playoffs without Joe Burrow basic, basically for more than half of the season. Like To me, that's a very impressive accomplishment on their part. So you've lost to good teams. You have. But um, now you actually have to cash in on that by taking care of these not-so-good teams you're going to be playing the rest of the season. So it starts tomorrow, 10 a.m., road game. Uh, not had a, had a lot of success on the road this year, but, like I said, the upshot of that is most of your road games have come against good competition. This Titans team, at, at their best, they might be okay, but they are not going to be at their best. And honestly, the best thing I can say about this Titans team is that they are so injured, maybe they're a little unpredictable. We don't know who we're going to have to be dealing with in these games. We don't know who we're going to have to be worried about when the game starts because most of their key guys, the guys that you would assume that would be in this game, are out. Now, that can't be an excuse, of course, but I part of me is like, I, I don't even know what to say about some of these players they're going to have to play in this game. So to, to run it down real quick, to try to talk about the X's and O's as much as I can, because straight up, I don't know who the X's and O's are going to be because Tennessee is so banged up. Uh, I'll do the best that I can, but we are talking about a defense that is missing their best pass rusher in uh, Jeffrey Simmons and might also be missing Arden Key, a key outside edge rusher for them. Um, they're missing one of their starting inside linebackers. I think his name is Giddens or something. Um, they're missing cornerbacks like uh, Fulton. They're missing Sean Murphy Bunting. They're missing Caleb Farley. So they're down to basically third stringers at corner and safety. They obviously traded Biard to the Eagles. And then you've got no um, Amani Hooker. You've got no Kavon Wallace. So they're playing third stringers back there too, really. <coughs> so it, it's... Um, as stripped down a defense as you're going to find. And this is something that you see sometimes in December. Some of these teams just are completely ripped apart. So straight up, there's not going to be a lot that this team does on Sunday tomorrow that can impress us. Just whatever you do is like, well, you beat the Titans third stringers. And by the way, the Titans just got eliminated from the playoffs last week. And I would fully expect just as human nature, that Titans team to go well, there isn't a lot for us to play for now, so we're going to be deflated a little bit. Now, I know Seattle might be deflated a little bit too after that Philly win, but you punch that Titans team in the mouth a couple of times, they're done. I, I do expect an outcome like that, where if you do manage to get in those haymakers early, they're just going to lay down because there's nothing to play for. We see this all the time in the NFL at the end of the season. Not every team, but there are teams out there that are looking for an excuse to roll over. So... All those things I just listed on their defense, missing all of their key players, all of their best players. I'm looking at this Seahawks offense to drive the day. 
You've got Geno Smith back, which I think is great news. I'm excited to see what he can do. Hopefully, we're not forcing him out there when he's not ready, but it doesn't sound like that's the case. And we're going to need him because attacking this Titans secondary is where the money is going to be made. We need to attack this Titans pass defense because they are missing so many guys that you should be able to pile up the passing stats. You've got some of the best receivers in football. Metcalf coming off that great end-of-game drive. JSN with one of the best moments of his career so far. Lockett, I know it's been a little bit of a bumpy road lately, but we know what he can do. You should be able to pick that secondary apart when this uh, when this game starts. You should be able to go the whole game. You're going to have massive advantages all across the board with this team um, on defense. So while I know that the relative success of the running game against the Eagles excited a lot of people, and I do want to run the ball, I'm also very aware of the fact that we may not have Ken Walker, and I also am aware of the fact that our interior offensive line is still a problem. So I'm not thinking we can just completely lean on that and expect it to carry us. We are probably going to have to score some points in this game, and we're going to be leaning heavily on Geno Smith to put up those points. We're going to be leaning heavily on this receiver core to put up those points. This is an offensive line that is built to pass block any way. So I think we just have to lean into our identity here. I have a good amount of faith that it's going to happen. I don't, uh, like I said, you're playing second and third stringers up and down this Titans roster. And I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like that can carry the day here. Now, they've got similar problems on their offense, although to a lesser extent, and I do expect the defense to have some success, but I am very aware of the fact that quarterbacks like Ryan Tannehill tend to be very successful on this defense because we play so passively, which plays into the strength of a guy like a Tannehill, whose main weapon at this point is his mind because he's been playing for so long. And I, to a certain extent, I can acknowledge that a guy like Will Levis might have more talent and he might have more upside than Tannehill, but I think a lot of Seahawks fans would have preferred playing him because he's going to make mistakes that uh, you wouldn't expect uh, Tannehill to make. But um, I'm not expecting the defense to be able to completely carry the load the way that they did in a game like, say, the Giants game back in Week 4. So offense, got to bring it. This offense, I think, is poised for a turnaround in these last few games here. They can go at least go out on a strong note go, and maybe even go into the playoffs and be able to go through the playoffs however far they get on a strong note and make us feel better about 2024 because the offense was the side of the ball that was the most disappointing. So if they can have a strong end of season here, now that they have some degree of health on the offensive line, now that they have their quarterback, now that they have, at some point over the next couple weeks, we'll have our running backs, et cetera, et cetera. We should be able to build on some kind of momentum here from, I'd say, go back to the Cowboys game where we put up 35 points. If we can maintain that kind of play these last few weeks, maybe that saves some jobs. Maybe that saves Waldron. Maybe that saves other players in this offense, and maybe that gives us some reason to be optimistic about something going into 2020, uh, 2024 on offense, even if things don't change. And I'm all for that. I want to have some reason to be excited for next year. Um, Seahawks defense, Tennessee's offensive line has been kind of a disaster at protecting the uh, quarterback this year, so we should be able to get some pressure on Tannehill or whoever plays. I guess it could still be Levis. In theory, um, I think they do pretty good run blocking, but Henry doesn't look like the same running back. Um, that being said, he's probably the primary thing to be concerned about in this game. Uh, Derrick Henry, I think, is... I, I would rather take my chances with a guy like DeAndre Hopkins, knowing that he doesn't really have too much else in that uh, receiver core to help him because Tennessee lost Westbrook. And he's actually on IR, so he probably won't be back this year. In fact, I think he definitely won't be back this year. And they don't really have a ton going on at tight end. And uh, Traylon Burks, while he's going to play, has not really been all that effective yet. So Derrick Henry, I know that he is approaching the end of his career. I know he's having one of the worst seasons of his career, but... 
That's still probably got to be the focal point of this defense, and our run defense has been very leaky lately. It's been a big problem for weeks and weeks and weeks now after starting out so strong. So we got to throw what we got to throw at Derrick Henry, and if Tannehill beats us over the top, then that's just something I'm going to be willing to live with. Uh, if he does it, then good for him, but I don't think he has that in his arsenal right now. Obviously, it would help a lot to have a guy like Witherspoon. I don't, I don't think we're going to have him personally, but if we do, that does help. That's something that will would allow you to play a little more aggressively on defense. And also, Tajay Spears is somebody to be a little concerned about. He's been a really good pass catcher out of the backfield. He's been uh, very effective when he gets the ball just in general, I think. Um, Derrick Henry uh, has basically given way to Spears as the lead back. They um, split carries, not carries, but they split snaps almost 100% evenly. So I'm concerned about him as well, maybe even more so than Henry. He's probably been more effective than Henry so far this year. But, like I said earlier, this Titans team has some injuries on the offensive line. They, technically speaking, have an injury at quarterback. They have injuries at tight end that may or may not affect availability. We'll have to see on game day. So they don't have a lot to throw at you that isn't Derrick Henry. This isn't like two years ago when the Titans had A.J. Brown and Julio Jones. But, and Julio Jones was still a pretty good player at that point in time. This is a Titans team with DeAndre Hopkins, who, by the way, was not effective when playing with Tannehill earlier this year. He broke out when Levis got there more than anything. And um, really not too much else that should be threatening you. I, I guess their number two receiver at this point is Burks. And Burks has really not been off to a great start in his career. So, I'm not saying it's going to necessarily be easy. If you let the Titans hang around, maybe they'll be able to do the Buster Douglas bit. But if you bring the Mike Tyson type heat, if you knock him out in the first round, I don't think there's going to be big incentive for them to get up. So I would love to see that happen. If this team can come out, score 10 to 13 early points, I, t I think Tennessee would tap out more or less. But realistically... Coming off that Monday night game, it's a short week, it's an emotional win. I think it's only fair to expect the team to come out just a little bit flat. My, my question is, are they going to allow that flatness to be such a bad thing that they actually lose this game? Because if you lose this game, you have completely wiped out the benefit from winning the Eagles game. Like, that Eagles game now means nothing and I know it's not technically nothing because this is an AFC opponent and the Eagles were an NFC opponent. I get that. But in terms of us trying to make the playoff push, you've completely canceled it out more or less. It's, it's very, very minimal then. So I know the team is probably riding a little bit high after beating Philly. I know they're going to come out there and probably um, embarrass themselves a little bit in that first quarter. But what I'm looking for is the team to respond and answer in that second third quarter, third quarter, and not allow a flat start to turn into a flat game. I think they're going to do it. Like I said, this Titans team has major problems right now. If you lose to them, it's embarrassing. This is a five-win team, but the roster they're throwing out there right now in, in Tennessee is probably more like a two- or three-win team. Second stringers and third stringers everywhere. So I'm going to say the passing attack goes off on that weakened secondary. And I'm going to say our pass rush gets going against that Titans offensive line that has not been good this year. And I'm going to say we get it like 27-17, feeling pretty good. But um, at the end of the day, it's just going to be another tally mark in the win column. It's not going to be something that gets people's attention. It's not going to get everybody saying, oh, the Seahawks are back. The Seahawks are hot going into the playoffs. We're going to need a little bit of a streak here to build that kind of confidence. But it's going to be a good start. All right, so I will see you guys later today. If there's a need to post a video, I will. I'll be on Twitch uh, later today playing something. Come check me out. And uh, that's about it. I will see you guys later. Go Hawks. And all there is to say is go out there and win and build this winning streak up into something that gets us to that double-digit win season that would mark this season as something of a success.